Coming up on Science News Weekly, naked mole rats, gila monsters, and robotic arms. That's up next on Science News Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Science News Weekly with Dr. Kiki, episode 13, recorded Thursday, May 17th, 2012. Apple want a virus? This episode of Science News Weekly is brought to you by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to netflix.com slash twit. It's May 17th, 2012, and these are the stories that made headlines for this week. Do naked mole rats hold the secret to a longer life? Well, maybe, maybe not. But what they do have is a lot of brain protein called NRG1. The uncommonly long-lived rodent was compared against six other rodent species of varying longevities and found to have the most of this particular neuroprotective growth factor, the levels of which remain high throughout their lives. NRG1 is known to drop in, in humans as we age, and it's thought that this protein might be one mechanism responsible for allowing these animals, these naked mole rats, to age gracefully. A gene called PRKCA was linked to both good memory and post-traumatic stress disorder by European researchers. The study sequenced the DNA of volunteers to determine that there are two gene alleles, the A allele and the G allele. Volunteers with two copies of the A allele had the best memories for the details of pictures they were shown, whereas people with two copies of the G allele had the worst memories. People with an A and a G were somewhere in the middle. Brain scans showed that brain activity in areas of the brain involved in coding emotional memories was higher in people with two copies of the A allele. Additionally, the A allele was overrepresented in individuals who had been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. The moral to this story is that the genes that give you great memory abilities might also curse you with remembering too much. A paper in Nature reports a finding that might explain why some individuals are more prone than others to Alzheimer's disease. It's known that having two copies of the ApoE4 gene increases a person's risk by 8 to 10 times that of someone who doesn't. But the mechanism that leads to the increased risk has remained elusive. This study finds that ApoE4 triggers a signaling cascade involving a compound called cyclophilin A that makes the brain's blood vessels leaky and allows toxic substances that are normally kept out to pass through. It's this process that leads to neuronal death and if stopped in time could potentially prevent the development of the disease. The world's oldest cave art was discovered engraved in a 1.5 metric ton block of limestone in southern France. According to a report in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, carbon dating determined that the engravings and other artifacts found at the site are 37,000 years old, and additional analysis identifies it as Aurignacian in origin. Experiments measuring the effects of climatic warming on plant growth and flowering are coming up short. According to a review study in the journal Nature that compared real-world observations of approximately 1,500 plant species to the results of warming experiments involving 115 species, plants are flowering about four days earlier per degree Celsius of warming than predicted from the experiments. This mismatch suggests that experiments aren't taking all the appropriate variables into account and that the ecosystem models that depend on these numbers to predict the effects of a warming climate won't be making accurate predictions until the researchers figure this one out. How can the Gila monster help you with your diet? Through its spit. That's right, a compound called Exendin-4, which is found in the saliva of the Gila monster lizard, reduces food cravings in rats by suppressing the reward and motivation areas of the brain. The findings imply that the compound could be used to treat overeating, alcoholism, gambling, and other vices relating to cravings. Interestingly, a synthetic form of the compound is already available to treat type 2 diabetes under the drug name Exenatide. 
And scientists from the U.S. Department of Energy's Lawrence Berkeley Livermore Laboratory created an electric generator based on viruses. The harmless M13 bacteriophages were specifically engineered for enhanced piezoelectric strength and stacked 20 layers thick into a film smaller in size than a postage stamp. Pressure to the film produced enough energy to power a, li- a liquid crystal display, up to 6 nanoamperes of current and 400 millivolts potential. Still qu- not quite enough power to run your phone, but definitely a step in the right direction. For the first time, surgeons from the Washington University School of Medicine report the successful use of nerve transfer to restore partial limb function in a quadriplegic patient. The surgeons rerouted working nerves in the arm to connect to nerves that join the spine above the injury at the C7 vertebrae. And in another amazing feat of movement, neurosurgeons involved in the BrainGate 2 clinical trial report that two paralyzed study participants were able to control a robotic arm using the power of their brains and some computer technology. The arm was controlled via a neural implant and used to reach for, grasp, and hold various objects. And finally, are coffee drinkers any healthier? A study published today in the New England Journal of Medicine suggests that drinking coffee might be associated with lower mortality risk as you age. The authors used data from the American Association of Retired Persons study, which gathered the coffee drinking habits of over 400,000 people between the ages of 50 and 71. It was found that even though caffeine has been shown to have negative health effects, drinking up to six cups per day might help keep the coffin away. This episode of Science News Weekly is brought to you by Netflix. Netflix streams thousands of TV episodes and movies directly to you instantly, which saves you time, money, and hassle. And we all love the saving of hassle. There are several easy ways to instantly access Netflix. They're streaming streaming movies and TV shows. First, you can watch Netflix, their movies and TV shows on your Mac, PC, TV, um, the iPad, if you have an iPad app, you can watch on your iPhone if you have an iPhone app. If you have an Android phone, there are some apps for that as well. If you have a gaming console like an Xbox 360 or a PS3 or a Nintendo Wii, you can use one of those to access Netflix and all their streaming movies and TV shows. If you're not a gamer but you have a set-top box, they're cheap and uh, easy to use, like an Apple TV or a Roku TV, Roku box, you can use one of these devices as well. With Netflix, you can watch movies and TV shows using any of these devices anytime you want, anywhere you want. And one of the neat things about their seamless interface is that using any of these devices, you can start on one, stop anywhere in the middle of the program or movie that you're watching, pick it up later at that exact same spot on another device or the same device, and you, you never miss a thing. Whichever way you choose to access Netflix, you can watch as many as you want, any time you want, and you can cancel at any time. But you can try Netflix for free today for 30 days if you go to netflix.com slash twit. That's right. Go to netflix.com slash twit. Use that URL to access Netflix free for 30 days. Be sure to use it when you sign up for your free trial. We thank Netflix for their support of Twit and Dr. Kiki's Science Hour and Science News Weekly, and we hope that you enjoy watching instantly with Netflix. And that does it for the science headlines this week. Let me know what you think about these science news stories or tell me what you think should be news by emailing me at drkiki at drkiki.tv or you can leave me a voicemail at 650-741-5454. To watch the full episode of Dr. Kiki Science Hour, go to twit.tv/kiki. I'm Dr. Kiki. Thanks for watching.